Well, my name is Neil Barodkin. Uh, I recently moved down to uh, North Myrtle Beach from Nyack, New York, where I spent maybe 37 or more years there uh, working, at, working as an acupuncturist, so self-employed acupuncture and manual therapy. And uh, I've been coming down to the center many times over the years. Um, I think my first visit was in early 1970. I first heard about Baba when I was a student at Arizona State University. I was a freshman and uh, I didn't particularly want to be in Arizona going to school. I just wanted to have an adventure. So uh, one evening I was riding my bicycle around the main, main uh, mall of the campus, which I loved to do at night. It was beautiful, beautiful nights. Uh, I was tripping on LSD also, sh should mention that. And I had stopped, and, uh, stopped at one point and there were two fellows sitting on a grassy area and they started talking to me. And uh, the more we talked, the more it seemed like we were on the same page and I feel like they became instant friends of mine. And uh, they were living off campus and I'm, they invited me over to their house uh, in the evening and um, we, we became good friends. And uh, in the second semester, uh, I, I was standing in the living room with, with one of these fellows uh, John, and um, he was talking to me about esoteric uh, subjects, and uh, we were both interested in that kind of thing. And uh, it was a beautiful day, the sun was coming into the room, and uh, he mentioned uh, various um, masters, and he said at one point, did you ever hear of this guy named Mihir Baba? I hear that his uh, books are impossible to understand. And when he said the name Mayor Baba, there was like a flash went off in my head. And I immediately saw this picture of a man. And that was that. And uh, at the end of the second semester, I returned to uh, Fairlawn, New Jersey, where my parents, parents lived and where I grew up. And I reconnected with some high school friends that, when I got back. And um, one of them was a student at Fairleigh Dickinson University in Teaneck, New Jersey. And he had an English literature professor by the name of Bruce Hoffman. Some of you may remember Bruce. Um, and the next thing I knew, my friends were saying, we're taking a ride into New York City to the uh, West Village to go see the Mayor, Mayor Baba Center. And so I went with them and uh, the place was just packed with people. And there was these photos and uh, paintings of Mayor Baba all over the place on the walls and looked at him and I said, that, that's the guy who I saw in my head. That, when he just flashed like that. And the next thing I knew, they were wanting to come down to the center. And um, so there was four of us and we drove down to the center here and spent about four days here. And uh, I, I hadn't, did not return to the center until um, 1985 when my mother passed away and right after she passed I came down to the center for the first time, at, at the second time. Uh, Baba was a ever-present in the back of my mind. Uh, when my mother was past, uh, ill and declining, I was read, reading uh, Kitty Davies' book. 
And that was really helpful to me to have that presence. And so like I said, after I came down, uh, after she passed away, I came down for the second time and spent a few, few days here. And the first time I came down, Myrtle Beach was just all trees. There was no, none of this commercial stuff going on here. And the, uh, the second time I came down, it was boom, all here. <laughs> just like somebody plopped it all down. So uh, I visited the center many times over the years. I, and uh, people would come up to me and say, have you been to India? Did you go to India? And I had this happen a lot. And I started to resent it a little, little bit. Um, I felt like I was supposed to go there to, and be, be a member of a club or something. And I didn't like that. Um, but um, in October of, October of 2011, I came down to the center with a woman friend of mine, very spiritual woman who never been to the center before. And uh, we were, uh, uh, we left from LaGuardia Airport in, in New York City. And our plane was four hours late. And uh, Spirit Airlines gave us all $100 certificate to, to use on future, future flights. So uh, I got back to Nyack in my home and um, thought, well, what, what am I going to do with this certificate? And I said, I'm coming down to the center again. So I came down to the center in, I remember the exact date, but it was early October of 2011. And um, I said to, said to myself, I just want a very quiet visit here. I want to be by myself. I don't, I don't want to talk to people. Well, it turns out that was a community, uh, community day where all, all the people Baba lovers would come on to the center and they'd prepare a big meal and there were programs all over the place. And I found myself getting drawn into the preparation for the meal and I started to really like it and love it and I was having a great time. I was connecting with people uh, in the afternoon and at night. And uh, after the four, that was a four day visit. I think most of my visits were like four days. I don't know why. I got back to my home in Nyack and I thought to myself, what am I doing here? I need more of Baba's atmosphere in my, in my life. So that night I woke up in the middle of the night and I was lying in bed about half awake, half asleep. And I heard this very audible voice in my head. And it just said, Baba's tomb. And I immediately knew what that meant for me. And it just broke, broke my resistance to uh, going to India. And, uh, you know, the tears were streaming down my face. And I said out loud, Baba, I, I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> the next day I ran into a friend of mine in a market and uh, someone who I knew had been to India for her own re reasons. And I told her, I told her, I'm, I'm, guess what? I'm going to India. I want to know what a good time to go is. And she said, well, like the first of the year. Um, and she said, talk to me about a, a woman who lived in Nyack, who was a Baba lover, uh, by the name Buffy Bernhard. I don't know if you know her, but, um, Buffy and I talked on the phone. We got reconnected. It turns out, uh, I was at a party at her house about six years before that. And neither of us knew either, either one of us was a, Baba lover. 
And uh, we arranged to have a tea together, sat down, and she br brought her photo album at, from her trip. And we looked over that. And um, she said, you know, you got to get a driver, a car service, and uh, don't, don't take the train from Mumbai. Um, and, you know, have a hotel room when you get, the, get to Mumbai. So I started arranging all of that. And within four days or so, I think I had all of my arrangements done. It was like all that, calling India, calling this person, calling that person, buying my ticket. And I was getting really excited about this. I, I, I never had a trip before in my life where I had the plan like this and have it happen so quickly. So, um, like I said, I was an acupuncturist and manual therapist at that time. And I had a client patient come in one Monday morning um, for treatment. And by the, it was Monday morning, by Wednesday I had all my arrangements done. And this fellow had a second treatment on the Friday. And uh, he, he never do that before, he never had done that before. And I said, guess what, Serge, I'm going to India next week. And he said, he looked up at me, he said, you got all your arrangements done? Do uh, you have your visa? And I just felt like a, 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 some heavy weight just collapsed on my head. I didn't know I needed a visa and uh, I didn't know what to do. So he's on my treatment table. I'm going down to my computer uh, trying to call the Indian Embassy. And then, of course, you can't get through to the Indian, Indian embassy, embassy. I come back upstairs. Serge is on the table. I said, Serge, I can't get, get in touch with the Indian Embassy. He says, you don't do it like that. You have to go through an agency called Trevisa in New York City on the west side. They do it. So I uh, connected with them online. I made my arrangements to um, you know, have an appointment and pay a fee and all that sort of thing. And this is Friday now. I got all, got all my stuff done with uh, Trevisa and I paid my fee. I had an appointment and I, um, I felt like I needed to have an appointment earlier. I was leaving the next, one, the next Wednesday. So uh, I made a call to Trevisa and I actually got somebody on the phone, a woman, and she said, if you're leaving next Wednesday, you have to come in right now. You know, that, Monday is no good where I had my original appointment. So, in a frenzy, I canceled all my appointments for the afternoon, drove into New York City, got parked in a garage, and... Um, Got to uh, Trevisa and I went, I was early. Uh, I actually, my appointment was the last appointment of the day. And I went upstairs and a uh, fellow said, you know, you're too early. We can't possibly do anything right now. Go downstairs, see the doorman. He'll tell you where to stand. So I'm outside. It's a cloudy day. Uh, a fellow walks up, up to me, an Indian citizen, and suddenly the sun started coming in, and uh, I was a nervous wreck at that point. I thought, I might not get to go to this trip. What am I going to do? And I started talking to him about why I was at there, and he said to me, well, 
after I came to the United States, I had to go back to India. I had to get a specific document that I didn't have and uh, like that. And I, he also told me the agency needs to see your trip itinerary. Well, I didn't have my trip itinerary with me. So, in another frenzy, I ran over to a Fed, huge FedEx office uh, a number of blocks away. I paid some money, got online with their computer, and I had my trip itinerary saved. I printed it out. I came back to Trevisa. I'm all running now. I was, I was nuts. I get back to Trevisa, and now there's a lot of people there, and I'm online. And I get, get upstairs when it's my turn. Sure enough, they want to look at your trip itinerary. And the fellow behind the desk says, well, we, we send you a link on your email where you can track the uh, progress of your um, uh, my visa, right, exactly. And he looked up at me and he said, no, go home and try to relax. Everything will be okay. So I went home, back in Nyack. The week, it's the weekend now, and I'm just a nervous wreck. And there was one night, I think it was a Sunday night, uh, I, I was preparing to go to bed, and I have a big photograph of Bob, Baba on my bedroom uh, wall. And I, I, I feel like, I felt like he was calling me to sit down and just be quiet with him. And I just sat down and just, I felt like I, I was, I had my head in a mother's lap at that point. Monday comes around, I look at my uh, email, I get, it's like nine o'clock in the morning, it says, your passport has been delivered to the Indian consulate. And about three o'clock in the afternoon, I get another email, email that says, your visa is in. Well, I had to cancel patience again. That afternoon, I drove into New York City. I got my passport and visa. I came back to um, Nyack and um, I just, just, I was just excited that this was all happening. So Wednesday comes around, I get, I had a friend driving me to the airport. And um, I, I called another friend and I said, Libby, I'm going to, leaving to India, uh, India, I'll be gone for about 10 days. I'll see you when I get back. She said, when are you leaving? I said, well, such and such time in the afternoon. She threw her hands up, uh, I guess, she said, if you're going to a Newark airport, you've got to get, get there earlier because you're going to have tons of traffic. And uh, most of the trips that I'd ever taken were very early in the morning. So I called my friend up who was driving me. I said, Gilda, we need to go earlier. She says, oh, I don't know if I can do it. Get, get a call back from her in a little while. She says, OK, we can go. You know, I was all ready to go. I was already packed, everything. And uh, we started down the New Jersey Turnpike, and sure enough, all the traffic came to the stop. And I'm sitting there with her, and I'm, I didn't want to make her nervous, but I was freaking out. I said, 
once again, another thing, I'm not going to, you know, get my flight. And I imagine myself getting out of her car and actually running down the turnpike. It was crazy. But I got to uh, the airport on time, got my flight, and I was so excited to be going. And uh, flight takes off, going down the runway, and the feeling that I have is just indescribable. I never had the ex experience prior, prior to arranging this trip where helpers were put in front of me to uh, guide me to what to do. It, it was just like that. I've heard it said that uh, Bob always takes you to the edge. You know, <laughs> I was certainly at some kind of edge making plans for this trip. You get to India, get to Mumbai, um, and the airport was hugely crowded. crowded. This is the old airport at that time. Um, went outside. I was about an hour early, and I told the hotel and their car service I'd be at there at a certain time. I'm an hour early. I didn't know what to do. Um, then two guys walked up to me. I guess they were like airport helpers, and I said, "I I got to get in touch with the uh, hotel." Uh, um, uh, I arrived early. And they, they said, just relax, we'll take care of it. And so they stayed with me, and sure enough, the car service came. And um, we, we were maybe th three minutes out of the airport um, grounds, and we got into the worst traffic jam that I'd ever seen in my life. I thought my driver was going to have a nervous breakdown. And it was just unbelievable. Cars were coming from all direction, and nobody, nobody wanted to yield to anybody. But finally, we got going, and I got to the hotel. Um, had a fairly good sleep, woke up very early, and 6 a.m., my driver is ready for, to pick me up. So the trip to um, Maribad, um, it was crazy. The t way the Indians drive, it was just, it was just nuts. And um, finally, I got to Maribad, and uh, when I got out of the car, I just felt like I was being supported by, I don't know what. And I didn't have any jet lag at all. Got in, got registered, got my room uh, assignment. And uh, you go to the center and put away all my things. I was sit, uh, st staying in a large room, a dormitory. And uh, I was in time for the evening meal. I got there. Uh, I got set up at a table, and I thought, well, I'm just going to, I'm not, I'm going to be all alone by myself for dinner. Next thing I do is I look up, and I see Jeff Wolverton standing a few feet away from me, and suddenly, soon, soon enough, I was sitting at a table with a large number of people, and after dinner, I went back to, um, they, they, had a, they had a film a film about Bob I had never seen before, right after dinner, and it was just beautiful. And I went back to uh, my room, there's a courtyard, and I was just sitting on the step, and I just broke down and cried, like, like I don't know if I cried that much in, in, in quite a while, while, but it was just, 
I was overwhelmed. So I stayed in India for 10 days and it was a wonderful trip. Um, I met a lot of people, uh, went to Merizad first time on the bus, get to Merizad. Um, I went and looked in uh, Erich's room and the light coming out of that room was just powerful. And uh, I spent some time at Mimerzad and uh, went back to uh, the, the center. And uh, in a few days, I connected with another fellow who was uh, uh, teaching in uh, Bangkok. He was, had, uh, had a job there, American fellow. And so we connected and we went back to Merzad together. And I told myself, well, you know, Neil, you're just imagining that energy coming out of Erich's room. It won't be this, that way this next time. I get there, I get off the bus, go to Erich's room again. It was even more intense. It just just blew me away. So I had one, one experience that uh, happened with me. Um, I was lying in bed and I was thinking about Baba's tomb and, and I was picturing it in my mind. And every time I pictured it in my mind, I felt like I was being drawn to the left side of the tomb, and I said, you know, what's that about? So I, uh, after breakfast, went back to uh, um, Baba Samadhi, and I was drawn to what was on the left side of the uh, um, Samadhi, and it was um, Mayor's, Mayor's tomb. And I did, just stood there for a while, and I just felt all this love and just love feeling just coming into me. So uh, ten days and um, ten days in uh, India. Got back home. Got got sick day after I got, got home. I mean, I was sick. I was blown out for maybe 10 days or so. Uh, I'm trying to think. I never, I never wanted to move to Myrtle Beach. I told myself I am never moved to Myrtle Beach. Um, and so recently I was at the point in Nyack where I, since COVID really, I wasn't getting any business, money coming in. I was drawing on my savings and it was painful to watch. And I said, I gotta, I, I gotta get out of here. So I, uh, first thing I did is I made a trip to uh, Mexico where I had an ex-girlfriend and I stayed in her house for a few days. And this is in uh, San Miguel. And I thought I'd move there, but it didn't work out. So I get back home to Nyack and I say, what am I going to do now? And a thought about the center popped into my mind. And I decided to call center, see if anybody was doing house shares down there and uh, would they post a notice for me uh, you know, someplace. And a couple of days later, I get a phone call connecting with um, Jim West. And he had to move out of where he was living. Um, and um, we decided to, to you know, look for a place together. Of course, 
he's down here and I'm up there, so I can't look at places except online. Uh, but he uh, spoke to um, Donna Stewart, and uh, she was renting out the lower part of her house, and we decided to go in on it together. And here I am in Myrtle Be North Myrtle Beach now. And uh, every day that I've been down here, I like to go to the center, just sit in the lagoon cabin and be with Baba's energy. So here I am, and uh, I don't know what, what the future is, uh, but you just leave it in Baba's hands. And um, it's good to be here. And I think that's it. Yep. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. You know, the night uh, where, uh, where I, I said I was trying to decide about coming down to the center, mm -hmm. I had a dream that night. And the dream was that I saw Baba. Uh, he was sitting in a raised platform. He was pointing out to, I guess, a bunch of Baba lovers. And I was sitting. I was sitting to his left, watching him, and that was a key to. It was a message to me that moving down to the center was going to be okay. That I needed to do that. So I had I had a lot of dreams about Baba over the years, and the first one, most impactful dream, uh, happened a bunch of years ago. I don't remember when. Uh, I was living where I moved out of recently, and uh, I pictured I, in the dream there was a, a, a flat field, very large flat field at night, and there was a very narrow path going straight. Maybe the path was maybe this wide. And I ran down to the path, and Baba was standing in the path. And I threw myself at his feet. And I looked up at him, and he looked down at me. And his eyes just expanded. And I saw all the stars and the cosmos like that. And I, I, I can't forget that dream, ever. It was pretty amazing. It was great. I had another dream where I saw him sitting on a white horse and he was entirely naked and he had long hair that went down <laughs> and uh, I, someone said Baba was called the white horse avatar. I had, I had one dream that I was playing chess with Baba and um, I mentioned that to somebody and she said well who won? I said, do I need to tell you who won? The, who won? <laughs> Obviously.